So as you guys may know by now, I'm not really a huge fan of going to home games. They're not really my scene, but there is one game in particular that I make an exception for, and that's where I'm bringing you guys today. I've played in this game before. Uh, I think it was vlog number something. You'll see it right here. And it's always a ton of action. It's a good group of guys and it's in a safe area. So figured if I can come regularly or even semi-regularly, I will. And most of the time I'm not gonna vlog, but once in a while, it seems like a fun idea. So that's the case for today's video. By the way, if I'm speaking kind of funny, it's because I'm wearing these uh, Invisalign trays. I'm on my last set, only one more week of these things. Thank God. Anyway, that's the plan for today. It's a 1025, no limit, no max buy-in. I think I'm gonna buy in for maybe around $10,000 or so. And hopefully it doesn't go too terribly and we just have a good time. Now, one quick thing before we get into the cards, I will be going to Vegas these dates. So uh, if you see me in the area, feel free to say hi. I'm gonna be playing some tournaments, you know, World Series and all that. And I'm also gonna be jumping into cash games. All of that will uh, hopefully result in some fun content on the channel. And also one more thing, uh, after the session today, I think I'm gonna do a recap of my poker results so far for the year. We're right around the halfway mark, so I figured maybe you guys are interested in that. So yeah, that's it for now. Let's get inside, play some cards. All right, everyone, here we are playing some 1025 No Limit Hold'em. There's no max buy-in for this game, so I sit down with $10,000 and get involved early on with pocket eights. I race to 75 and get three callers before the small blind makes it $600 to go. Plenty of action right off the bat. He has around 4,500 in his stack, so considering that we're pretty deep and in position, I make the call. Plus, I could sometimes have the best hand anyway. Everyone else folds and we go heads up to a flop of queen 5 3 rainbow. Seems like a good board for my hand, so when he continues with a $400 bet, I happily make the call. The turn is the 7 of hearts, and this time he checks it over to me. Not sure if a bet makes much sense with my hand, so I check it back and we get a beautiful offsuit 8 on the river, giving me a fairly hidden set. As if that wasn't sweet enough, my opponent now bets again, and it's a healthy size, too. $1,400. This bet leaves him with around $2,500 behind, so I'm going for it. Given how the hand is played out, I think it's unlikely he has an overpair or even a queen, but we gotta try, right? So I go all in, but sadly, he folds right away. Still, it's a good start to the night. In the next one, there's an early position limper before someone raises to 75. I'm on the button and I look down at, guess what, pocket eights again, same suit and everything. Could go either way between calling or re-raising, this time I choose the more aggressive option and make it $250. Everyone folds except for the initial raiser, so the two of us are going to a flop of king 10 5 with two diamonds. He checks it over to me and even though it's a bad board for my exact hand, I prefer just betting small with everything I could have. So I bet $150 and he calls. The turn is another king. My plan is to check this card back and see what happens on the river, but plans change as my opponent leads out for $425. Interesting play, and I think all three options actually have some merit for me. Folding seems reasonable, considering that I could have better hands than some measly pocket eights. Calling seems fine too, since we are beating some draws and getting a decent price. And the third option of raising sounds a little reckless, but I don't hate it either because would he really play a strong hand this way? I don't know. After thinking for a bit, I didn't want to get too crazy in a friendly game, at least not yet, so I take the straightforward route and just fold. A few rounds later, the straddle is on for $50 and two players limp in. I get dealt ace five of hearts on the button and raise it up to 250. The small blind and big blind call, but both of the limpers fold. 
not exactly what I was expecting, but okay, three ways to an exciting flop of King Jack Deuce with two hearts, giving me the nut flush draw. As if this hand wasn't hot enough already, the small blind leads out for $200 and the big blind calls. Now it's back on me and I think both raising and calling are fine. This time I just call and we get exactly what we're hoping for as the 10 of hearts arrives on the turn, giving me the nut flush. The small blind seems undeterred and continues with another bet of $300. Then the big blind raises to $1,300. Action is back on me, and this is what you call a dream spot. It seems impossible for me to do anything without looking super strong, but what am I going to do, right? So I make the call, and the small blind gets out of the way. Heads up to see one last card, which comes the nine of diamonds. This time, the big blind slows down and checks, and now it's my turn. He's got around 2,600 remaining, so given how big the pot is, I think an all-in is the only option. That's what I do, and after a few seconds, he decides to call. Sounds like good news, and sure enough, when I turn my cards over, he mucks. So yeah, things are going very well so far. Let's see if we can keep it going with Ace-King. I raise it up to 75, and four people make the call. Five ways to a nice flop, Ace-7-6 Rainbow. It gets to me, and with so many people in the hand, I think checking is a reasonable option, at least sometimes, so that's what I do. Two other players check behind me, but the button disagrees and bets $300. I'm not going anywhere, obviously, but everyone else gets out of the way. So only two of us going to a turn, which comes the 10 of diamonds. Not really ideal, I guess. Now we're losing to some hands we were beating on the flop, like... 9-8 or ace-10, but after I check and he goes all in for his remaining $650, my hand is just too strong to fold for that price. I announce a call and my opponent asks to run it twice. I say no problem and off we go to see two river cards. First one is the four of hearts, second one is the queen of spades, and what do you know we end up chopping versus pocket fours. Yeah. Gotta admit, I did not see that one coming. Nice hand, man. Next, a very similar situation develops where I open king-queen this time to 75 and once again get four callers. Off to another great flop, king-queen-jack with a flush draw. Kind of embarrassing how hot I'm running right now. But like I said last hand, I rarely bet against a ton of players, so this time is no exception. However, the cutoff this time disagrees and fires out $300. The small blind makes the call and now it's back on me. I think a check raise isn't a terrible idea, but I proceed with a call and we see the eight of diamonds on the turn. Small blind checks, I check again. This time the cutoff checks behind. River card is not great. The ace of spades, small blind checks a third time and so do I since any 10 now makes a straight. If the cutoff bets, I think we'll have a close decision, but he ends up checking back and we win. Not sure what these guys had, but I'll take it. It's been a very fortunate night for me so far, so of course I get dealt pocket aces right on cue. There's an open to $75, and I make it $250 from middle position. The player on my direct left cold calls, as does the small blind. Action gets back to the initial raiser, and I'm kind of expecting another raise, but he settles on just a call. Four of us going to a flop of jack, nine, eight, all hearts. I do have the ace of hearts, but aside from that, this flop kind of sucks. Given the pre-flop action and the fact that there's three other people in the hand, we could easily be behind already, so when it checks to me, I check it, and so does the player on my left. The turn card, however, eliminates all my worries. That's right, the king of hearts giving me the nut flush once again. Somehow, the small blind now leads out for $300. I'm not sure what he could be doing this with, but anyway, I make the call and everyone else folds. You know, looking back, I almost wish I raised or even went all in because calling is what anyone else would do with the ace of hearts. So maybe a raise would actually look weaker. I don't know, I digress. The river comes the four of clubs, which shouldn't change anything. But sadly, this time he checks it over to me. 
Well, it seems to me like he either has the Queen of Hearts or nothing at all. So with that in mind, I make a pot-sized bet of $1,700. Now my opponent seems very disappointed with the situation and starts laughing as he turns over pocket jacks. He hasn't made a decision yet, but of course with four hearts on the board, he's not going to call, right? Yeah, no, he doesn't call. He folds, but uh, once again, getting quite lucky, winning versus a flopped top set. A few minutes later, early position limps before the player on my right makes it 75. I'm next to act with Jack-8 of clubs, usually a hand that's not really strong enough to call. Probably better to just fold or occasionally raise, which is what I'm doing this time. It's good to not always race with aces, you know? So I make a $250 to go and only the initial raiser calls. Heads up to a 7 two spades, one club. He checks, I bet around half pot, and he calls. I'm looking for a good turn card to continue applying pressure, and that's exactly what we get in the deuce of clubs. This card improves me to a flush draw and shouldn't help him too much. So with that in mind, I size up to $1,000. Looking to get a fold from pocket pairs, any seven, maybe even a weak ace. Sure enough, after some thought, he lets it go and flashes me pocket tens, so this one worked out nicely. Now, most of you guys are probably already familiar with the stand-up game, which is exactly what we're playing during this next hand. If you don't know what I'm talking about, essentially it's a game where everyone stands up and the only way to sit back down is if you win a hand. The last person standing loses and owes everyone else a bounty, in this case $100 per person. So in this hand, I'm one of three people still standing and get dealt ace deuce of spades in late position. There's an early position open to 75, and then the player on his left makes it 275. Action gets to me, and considering that both of these guys play a lot of hands, and I'd like to sit down, I think this is a good candidate to re-raise as a bluff. So that's what I do, making it $700 to go. The original Razor who made it 75 gets out of the way, but the player who made it 275 continues with a call. Already a big pot brewing as we go to a flop of 996 with one spade. He checks it over to me, and I think a small bet is best here, both with my over pairs and hands like the one I actually have right now. So I throw out $450, and luckily face no resistance as my opponent quickly folds. By the way, I'm not a fan of ever showing bluffs, really, but that was one of the rules to sit back down. You had to show your hand, so yeah, just felt like that was worth mentioning. Anyway, we avoid losing the round of stand-up, which is always nice. In the next interesting hand, there's a $50 straddle on before I open ace-jack to 150. Only the small blind calls, and we flop top pair on jack-8-8. Eight, eight. He checks, I bet 100 bucks, and he calls. The turn is the king of clubs. He checks again. I would almost never expect him to have a king, but I check back because I don't think there's much point to betting now. And we see an innocent looking five on the river. Now my opponent fires out $275. Obviously, I'm not gonna fold ace jack after checking back on the turn, but for a few seconds, I actually contemplate raising for value. It seems possible he could be holding a weaker jack and perhaps hero call versus a raise, but then I quickly realize I'm getting way too fancy, so I come back to reality and just call, and we end up winning versus 10-9, aka a missed straight draw. I gotta admit, this happens to me kinda often, where I'll be in a straightforward spot and still find myself overthinking every possible variation that could take place. Seems like a waste of brain power, honestly. But anyway, with that rant out of the way, let's play another pot with Ace Deuce suited, this time the club variety. Straddle is on, and the player on my right opens to 150. Again, all three options are probably fine for different reasons. This time, I bump it up to $500. Only the initial raiser makes the call, and we're off to a flop with over 1,000 already in the middle. Queen 99 with a couple of spades, isn't exactly what I had in mind, but after he checks, I continue with a small bet. I'm hoping to get folds from better ace highs, maybe some medium strength pocket pairs, but my opponent doesn't care what I want and continues with a call. The turn is an interesting one, the deuce of spades, 
improving me to a pair, I guess, but also bringing in the flush. My opponent checks to me again, and now we have a decision to make. On one hand, we beat other ace highs now, but on the other hand, he probably doesn't have those anymore after calling my bet on the flop. Also, I don't think it's very likely he has a flush because he might sometimes check raise the flop with a flush draw. And also, let's be real, flushes are pretty hard to make. Instead, I think we're most likely up against either a queen or a pocket pair below the queen. So with all that in mind, I fire out a bet of $1,200, trying to make it difficult for those hands to continue. My opponent thinks it over and decides he's having none of it, once again making the call. At this point, I'm getting the feeling we're up against something fairly strong, so when the river comes to seven of hearts and he checks it over, I think it's time to wave the white flag. Honestly, I did consider bluffing for a minute, but it just feels like a punt at this point, and I think it's good to recognize situations where giving up is the best course of action. So I just check it back, and we lose versus ace nine suited. Good hand, man. Shortly after this one, it was getting late, so we all decided to end the game here and call it a night. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Yeah, so all in all, can't complain at all about how that went. It started off a lot better than it ended, I guess. I was running super hot in like the first hour or two. Then a whole lot of nothing happened and then I lost a couple of pots. So I guess that's how it goes. But like I said, overall, it was uh, a good night. I ended up winning like around 5,000 bucks or something. I actually don't even know. But as always, you'll see the results right over here. As far as uh, the six month update that I mentioned at the start of this video, Things have been going really well, um, although most of that happened like the first two or three months of the year. Over the last two months, pretty much, I've been like break even, despite having the biggest swings pretty much of my entire life. But anyway, it's been a fun ride and there's still another six months to go. This year has been very eventful and hopefully it continues that way, um, at least for the channel, because I think it's been pretty entertaining. But anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.